Oh my gosh, I cannot believe this day is finally here, but we need to talk about it. It sounds like Fallout 76 is about to become pay to win. And yes, I'm being dead serious about this. It sounds like literally the most wealthy players are going to be unstoppable and unkillable. Before we get into that, I do want to take a short little walk down memory lane and kind of look at some previous Bethesda projects like Fallout New Vegas. This game can give you so many hours of enjoyment. It has thousands of different items and tons and tons of cool quests and so many great characters that are well written and well thought out. Or even something like, heck, Fallout 4. Now this game is obviously a lot more controversial and some people did very much hate that, but in my opinion, this is still a very, very good game. I mean, yeah, it's got a simplified conversation system and it's not quite as deep as the other games, but still a very, very solid little adventure. But unfortunately, in the modern day, we got Fallout 76. Now, this is a game that is just trying to be an always online experience that adds almost nothing to the franchise except some very poor design decisions. What's up gamers, Dreamcast Guy here, and today we're talking about Fallout 76 because over the course of the last couple weeks, Bethesda's been really kind of getting the idea of the Bethesda roadmap. The idea that instead of just talking about Fallout 76 and its very incomplete current form, they're trying to paint the picture that in the future, this game will be a stupendous masterpiece, a game that's actually worth buying, when right now, it very obviously isn't. Of course, in these updates, they're talking about the ideas of uh, basically expanding the areas, giving new events, trying to just basically tinker with the mechanics to grow the game and make the fan base very, very happy. Well, recently, they've decided to introduce paid repair kits. Now that sounds very, very minor, but is an actuality a huge deal and something that in my opinion is about to permanently break the game forever and make it where very likely the fan base is all about to completely quit. So the two key aspects of Fallout 76 that make it feel very, very different from anything else in this series, in my opinion, is that, of course, first and foremost, it's multiplayer. You actually play it with other people, and so because of it, there are actually no NPCs. Everybody you talk to in the game is another person who's walking around and going on their own little quest. But the other thing that is very, very important to the gameplay loop is the fact that everything degrades. If you shoot a gun, Every single bullet actually cracks the barrel a little bit more. If you're trying to fight off a bunch of zombies and all you have is a golf club, every single swing of that is going to bend it. Which means that every item, no matter how good or how bad, will eventually shatter your hands. But this is actually a key part of the gameplay itself. It's actually part of how the game is very clearly designed. The way to try and combat this inside the game is actually to constantly have new sets of gear, or what I would do is I would actually try and carry several different guns at once that used different ammunition, so I could fire a shotgun shot, a sniper rifle shot, and then a pistol shot to make sure that everything was whittling down piece by piece and I could survive until I got back to the city. That's basically the overall point of Fallout 76 is they've said they want this to be much more of a survival focused experience. Well, what would absolutely break that? Repair kits. Now, this is the thing. Repair kits actually exist within the game. They're basically things that you can easily use to patch your gear, and ta-da, it's improving the quality of it. But I think that repair kits need to be rare. In order to keep the actual gameplay flow intact, you need to make sure that the game is able to keep the stability. You need items that are this useful to be few and far between. The more rare they are, obviously the more you're going to treasure them and care for them and use them only in the absolute most dire of situations. Like if your very, very awesome chest piece is about to shatter and you know you're about to attack a boss, you use a repair kit in order to keep going. Well, what would be a really bad decision? Well, maybe if they were selling these things inside the game. <sighs> All right, I'm gonna take a deep breath here because I am actually getting a little bit frustrated here. 
So the issue with this is the fact that now they're trying to sell repair kits, making it completely pay to win. And I'm being dead serious about this. Weapon degradation, item degradation, armor degradation is part of the game. If you're removing that by basically paying to not have to deal with it, you are breaking the game. Now, the biggest issue with this, in my personal opinion, is the fact that it proves that Bethesda lied to us. Because all the time, for months and months and months, they kept saying the same phrase over and over again. Alright, everybody, let's all sing it together. Fallout 76 will only have cosmetic microtransactions. Remember that? There are hundreds of articles that keep saying this exact quote. If we sell you something, it will not affect gameplay. If we sell you something, it's because you want to look cool and it won't have any actual effect on the balance. Well, let me tell you, Bethesda, selling stuff like repair kits is affecting the balance. Now, let me just sort of really spell this out there are items in this game that are better but weaker. You can get stuff that has ultra ultra high defense but crumbles like freaking bread underwater. So if you actually get these things, you need to use them very very sparingly. Put on your ultra high defense but low durability gear before a giant encounter, you get smashed up a bit and it helps you survive. If I can just constantly reapply repair kits, you are just going to completely break the game. The best items, it doesn't even matter. It doesn't matter about improvements, you can just constantly fix anything now and honestly I do think the fact that people are going to be abusing this system so let's face it they have already tried to overhaul this game several times over they've reworked stim packs they've reworked a lot of the durability system in general this is just clearly them trying to go one step further to make the game literally pay to win. So right now this sounds like a very small detail, but let me make it very, very clear. Every game that ends up selling stuff starts out doing it in small ways. This is actually a psychological approach. So a lot of times these games, these uh, studios will actually hire psychologists to figure out what exactly people are secretly craving and what will keep them playing longer. This is actually a real strategy, especially of online online games. It's something that Activision has actually talked about patenting because basically like if you're playing a Call of Duty online and you lose five matches in a row and then you log out, what they realize is, okay, if he loses four matches in a row, put him into a match with a bunch of very low skill players so he'll get some kills, be interested again, and keep playing for several hours instead of for 20 minutes every day. So the same thing goes for stuff like Fallout 76. They probably realized that people were logging in they were playing and once their stuff started to get a little bit worn down they'd go oh man now I need to go back to town and I need to fix my gear or I could just log out. They realize that if they can sell you something for super, super cheap and you'll keep playing longer and spending more and keep a little bit more addicted to their universe, of course they're going to do that. And then later on, they can sell you actual gear, actual supplies, actual ammo. This is all a slippery slope. If they can get away with selling you $5 repair kits or a $10 jacket Jacket that's always a slight upgrade, I guarantee you they're going to try and do it again. They're going to try and expand this idea. So my biggest fear with this is that this ends up becoming a success. If they end up actually making like a couple hundred thousand dollars off this plan or God forbid a million dollars off this plan, I guarantee you, you'll end up seeing microtransactions put into Elder Scrolls 6. I mean, why would they not? If there is free money that gets players to play longer, they will absolutely try and screw you with it. Absolutely they'll do it, just because they can. I'm not even saying this company is evil. I'm not one of those people that likes to act like freaking Bethesda sitting there twirling their mustaches, being like, yeah, this will make everybody mad. They're doing it because they think the fan base will put up with it. They're a business. Obviously, they're trying to make a profit, but if they can find a way to basically re monetize a fan base, they will do it 10 out of 10 times. Bethesda is no longer happy with upfront profit. They don't just want to sell you the game, they want to double monetize it and triple monetize it. They want to sell you costumes, they want to sell you mounts, they want to sell you DLC on top of everything else because they know 
they can get away with it. You need to make it very vocal and very clear that we will not stand for this. Fallout 76 at this point is a ghost town. People are quitting it in numbers, and no amount of PvP updates or giant overhauls to the game are bringing people back. The only way they're going to actually make more money is completely monetizing the fan base that still remains. But this is just my thoughts. What do you think about this mess? Let me know what you're thinking in the comments down below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like, share with your friends, and subscribe if you haven't already. But do me the biggest favor of all, and keep dreaming. Man, I managed to film this video. My camera is going to go dead in six seconds, three seconds, two seconds. Oh, yep, okay. Well, thanks for watching. You guys rock. Bye what I put up last or, you know, subscribe and see what's coming up next. Also, I promise that whatever I do, it'll try not to suck.